We're creating this video to make a clear statement to save this campus. Actually, that's the title of our lawsuit. It's Save the Laguna Street Campus versus the City and County of San Francisco. The lawsuit is really the only thing standing between the demolition of two of the contributing buildings and the um, construction in phase one of 450 mainly market rate units. I'm a, a neighbor and I've been working with other neighbors. Uh, we feel it's very important for the public to know that now is crunch time. Uh, our case is going to be heard. We are filing an injunction to prevent this outrageous demolition from going forward. These buildings are much too great to lose. The property was first uh, grounded in uh, 1858. In fact, uh, interestingly, it was uh, set aside as an orphanage for the Donner Party, if you can believe it. <laughs> so the city helped uh, th those folks get back on their feet. So the orphanage existed throughout most of the 1800s, and then it moved on to become the normal school in 1899, which was basically uh, a birthplace of public education in California. Um, it was a very significant site for teachers to become educated and girls. And the normal school movement throughout California, at least two-thirds of the students were women. This went from the San Francisco uh, Normal School to the San Francisco State University. And then in 57 it was transferred to the University of California. In December 2003, the University of California decided to close this campus and there's a marvelous film that documents uh, this process called the closing of the books at the UC Extension. The existing zoning code was a very loose set of guidelines that ultimately put uh, neighbors in conflict with each other and developers in conflict with the neighborhood. So we undertook a community planning process that would allow all of the neighbors to participate together with the shopkeepers and the people that drove through the neighborhood. Uh, people that were here for a variety of different reasons uh, could come together and make compromises and look at the needs of everybody else that was participating in the process and see where, you know, by allowing a tree to be planted in front of their building or by allowing a neighbor to develop their lot in a new way, uh, they might be able to achieve a vision that everybody could share in. The six-acre campus at the center of the planning area represented the heart and lungs of a scheme that would double the population of this neighborhood. The UC Regents, in an effort to undertake a development project, sought to rezone the site to uh, change it from public use zoning to uh, residential zoning. And at the time that they undertook that, the neighbors were unanimous in their opposition to it. City planning assured us that the city had no motivation for undertaking such a rezoning. Everyone could see that in, in light of this you know, decade-long community process that had taken place, this was completely inappropriate. Why destroy this exquisite campus, which is a catalyst for social change, for education, for transformation in our society. It's open space, recreational area, it's promoting the arts, and it's a center of the Hayes Valley community um, for market rate housing, which will effectively be mainly a bedroom community. It will have a little bit of neighborhood serving retail. There are other sites that we can build housing on. A number of times the idea of undertaking a land swap was raised, but it was never really uh, pursued. And there's no reason why the city couldn't swap parcels. The chimney's probably 60 feet, so it'll go up 15 to 20 feet higher on the Laguna Street side, which is the low side. But uh, as they go up, they will view our city and uh, pay some premium rents. When you look at a leafy, open neighborhood like this, it's hard to imagine what it could feel like in the future when the population of the neighborhood is doubled and uh, we no longer have uh, these kinds of uh, fringe, undeveloped space or this beautiful open space in the center of the neighborhood. <laughs> Nobody likes this building. It's 19... 
70s, 60s styled architecture. But it has been off the table as far as the planning process is concerned from the get-go. And what's really important about that is the development is as dense as could be negotiated on the rest of the six acre site. And this was set aside, we believe for phase two, and that the developer, um, once the first build out of 450 units is done, will come back here to do a high rise, probably 10 stories. We own the property, it's public land, and there's absolutely no reason to destroy an historic district on the National Register. Mind boggling. It's the oldest building on the campus, it dates to 1925, and that uh, wonderful sort of elevated stairway with coming down was where the students from the normal school graduated and the folks watching the ceremony would be sitting in that parking lot which was a green space at the time. It is very disturbingly being torn down for open space. Um, cannot think of a reason why you would tear down the oldest and one of the most historic buildings within this historic district for open space. The developers have extorted compromise from the neighborhood by threatening to keep the site boarded up and as a permanent threat to their, uh, their security by having uh, these vacant lots go unutilized. You'll see a blank facade that's been stuckled over above the arch. Uh, behind it lies one of our most magnificent WPA mosaics done by Maxine Albro. She was a protege of Diego Rivera and supervised all the work at Coit Tower. The mosaic is made from leftover marble from the 1915 Pan Pacific Exposition and it uh, portrays various wildlife and such from native California. We think it's still under there and we've asked for, as a part of the mitigation measures, uh, in the environmental review process that infrared photography be used to determine whether it exists and if so we'd like to see the Arts Commission, the city and the developer work to restore it. I uh, moved into this neighborhood in 1978 and at that time there was a rumbling of change going on in the area. The beginnings of the process of gentrification started. It was given uh, by the San Francisco Art Commission uh, to the neighborhood to utilize for development of art for the youth in the area. All of this was given to the neighborhood free of charge. I'm very, very concerned because uh, that's scheduled to go. They cannot attend other community facilities in this area because of the lines of uh, demarcation that the uh, gangs have put up. This is another reason why we think it's so important to have a community facility here. So this is the newer section of the building. It was completed between 35 and 36, and the artworks inside were completed in 37. Inside here is a magnificent um, fresco done by Ruben Kaddish. It's called A Dissertation on Alchemy, and it reflects the splitting of the atom. San Francisco is made up of its people and its land and government and planning are efforts to make the most of those resources. And unless we do have proactive planning, we're not going to be able to successfully move beyond these endless divisive battles and we're not going to be able to successfully ensure the future happiness of our, of our neighbors. That is what didn't happen here that is what could have happened here. Save the Laguna campus! Save the Laguna campus! Save the Laguna campus! <laughs>